Today is March 19th and Bantern with Boone is back. Let's talk some yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy, John Boy and Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy, John Boy and Jake. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks. Thank you very much for joining us today on this fine March 19th. My name is Jimmy. His name is Jake. This episode is brought to you by SeatGeek, where if you use code YANKS, you can get $20 off a ticket of your choice. Just use an email you have not used before. Code Yanks, $20 off spring trainings. Got some games left. We got the seasons coming up. Home opener, Friday at 1. Tickets available. You check. You check. And when you do, check on the SeatGeek app or the website and use code Yanks to get $20 off. Jake, Boone joined us again. We've got updates of who's not a Yankee, updates of who's might be hurt as a Yankee. Mm. A lot going on. How you doing? James Davis. Skip, uh, I'm doing well, man. Uh, yeah, we just, full disclosure, just ripped with Booney, asked some of the pressing questions, uh, and we got kind of more answers than we thought. So excited to get into that. Um, and it's just a sign that the season's coming, man. Uh, you know, it's March 19th today. Um, I don't know. I, I think some Yankee... Some Yankee fan illusions or delusions, not sure the right word, might be gone now that Snell's officially off the table, Cease got traded. Um, but, you I don't know. think it was delusional, but it's... What was the other word I said? Illusion? I don't think it was an Does illusion. I don't think so. Maybe if you're being coy. No idea. Uh, but I guess even the fact that we can't daydream about it anymore, it's almost like, all right, let's get into it. Let's talk, you know, some fifth starter for a little bit, which we did. Yeah. And got a little bit to chew on. Um, Actually, a decent amount to chew on. And you listed four guys, and he said, yeah, those are the four. After this, Basically. after we throw it to Booney, right. there's a decent amount to chew on post Booney that I right. want to, like, really talk to you about because he gave us a lot of nuggets, but the audience needs to hear that first. Okay. Uh, DJ, we talked about him, and uh, Cease is gone, and Snell's gone. Which I thought there, I think... We heard the Yankees offered Snell, like, a long-term short AAV deal. Like, this is what we're offering you. Right. Kind of like they knew he wouldn't accept it. But, like, guys, we're not in for the short a lot because of the 110% tax. Which the Astros also said, we're not doing that either. Yeah, and there's probably an interesting contract. You know, if you knew everything in hindsight, like, we've complimented the Stroman deal a lot where Snell landed. I've It's an interesting combo. It's not a convo for today. Today's about spring training, excitement. Uh, we even got some trivia at the end. Light trivia. Light trivia, yeah. Light I also, trivia. I want to say Rodon pitched really well yesterday. 5.2, yeah. no hit. Um, and I want to shout out our dude Justin Shackle. Had a great post-game interview with him. I saved the sound bites, but he asked him about, he asked him a good question about attacking with the secondary pitches versus trying to get a swing and miss. And Rodon gave such a detailed answer. And then halfway through, was like, I think I'm saying too much. Um but it he was did, he it was that cool. a little bit in his like first press conference too, and after he started talking to to Curry and and them, I think he he catches himself a lot. It was cool. He was like, yeah, if it's if it's o o one o o one, I'm gonna try and throw those pitches in the zone. But if it's one and two, two and two, mm-hmm. I'm gonna throw those pitches to try and get them to swing out of the zone. Basic stuff, but it was like it was like he knew the exact counts of when Wells was going to call and he was going to throw, which was a uh, was a nice little soundbite and he looked really good, so I enjoyed that. Yeah, there was a couple couple fun Rodon whisper conversations around the office this morning. He uh he timed that he timed that start pretty good and hopefully we're saying that a lot through the year. Uh Let's essentially get it over to Booney. Just a reminder for everyone, we're heading down to Tampa this week. Uh, our event sold out on Saturday, so thank you, everyone, that's doing that. If you still see us Saturday, wave, throw a shirt, try to pants BBD if he goes to the bathroom. 
Um, and we're, uh, we'll be around watching the Blitzball Battle final on, on that Thursday. So uh, hopefully we see you in Tampa the next couple of days. We talk about that with Booney a little bit. So let's just get into it and let's babble a little bit. And you guys can babble too. How about that? English this week. Yes. Uh, language of your choice next yeah, week. Yeah, not too many foreign languages this week. But comment below which language you'd prefer to hear us banter with Booney with. Uh, be a better you in 2024 with Babbel, science-backed language learning app that actually works. Don't go paying hundreds for private tutors or anything like that. Babbel's got quick 10-minute lessons handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. Uh, approachable, accessible, rooted in real life. That's what you want. No, no Donde Esta La Biblioteca, unless you're a book junkie. So, with that, you can also get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash yanks, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash yanks. Click the link in the description. Let's see Boone. We are back bantering with Boone, John, BBD, and Booney. I... We want we want, do want to start with the big question, and I mean this has been happening quick. But is Joe Torre gunning for your job? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think so. He he okay. actually he's leaving today, um, but it's been awesome having him uh, having him here the last few days. Um, I reached out to him a few weeks ago and invited him, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm in Florida, and then I'm going to come over and see you." And at first. He got back. He actually said, yes, he's coming. And then the next day he texted me, I'll be there these dates. He goes, but I don't think I'm going to get in uniform. And I'm like, all right, you can do whatever you want, of course, but I'm going to keep bugging you about the uniform. (laughs) And a half hour into the first day he was here, he was, he was in the Kakuza's office and I I went to do something. I came back, he's in uni. (laughs) And then I was working on a, on a pitching change for uh, at some point in the last day I, I turned to him. The second first time he's like, yeah, I don't think so. And then I turned to him. I'm like, you want to go get him? He goes, yeah, I'll go get him. So that was pretty cool. But he had a great time, I know. Um, and certainly we did. Uh, he was he was great here. He, you know, our, our guys were able to kind of have some great conversations with him. Um, you know, he's he's got such a presence to him. And obviously, you know, he walks in the d- the door. It's a big deal. But um, you know, the humility you walked into with, I think guys really gravitated to. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully it's something we can do again and again. It was nostalgia filled seeing him walk out to the mound. I know that you have an impression of his walk, but it is just such a iconic pitching change mound visit walk with the, the shoulders forward and the, the hands never yeah. go up. Uh, have you ever thought about, you know, changing your walk to the mounds like do you I, I can't even picture how you walk so i've had a lot of people that know i do that invitation like could, could you give us one tory to the mound and i've never done it and joe actually said when he when he came back from taking carlos out he goes all right now you can do my walk if you want <laughs> so so I, I might bust it out at some point okay hey you you mentioned Carlos there. He's obviously one of the guys that all Yankee fans were having their eyes on spring training, and we, we've we been giving him his flowers, man. I, I Body composition looks different. He comes out uh, the other day, and this is coming after the Cole news, and he, you know, he puts it out there. Um, we're excited to see what he's got this year, and, and something we get into, and I, it's one of Jim's favorite thing, is pitch mix, and I Sometimes we probably get too lost in it with Rodon, but he's been throwing some change up, some cutter, the curveball a little bit. I, I guess of his third pitches, do you do you kind of have one that you prefer or, or one that you think could help the repertoire the most? I, I, I think it's outing to outing what he's what he's feeling, what he has on a given day. Um, obviously, the fastball slider, even the cutter. He threw some really good cutters yesterday. Um, that gives him a different look too. Um, he's had some outings this spring where he's landed the curveball well. He didn't. Yesterday was mostly fastball slider strength. That was, you know, he he was really good with those two pitches. Like I said, he he threw a cu- couple really good cutters in there. He had a strikeout with it. 
Um, he didn't literally land his change up much yesterday. He landed a couple of good breaking balls. So I think it's just outing to outing. Um, but I think it's being, you know, a little more versatile with, with his fastball, you know, obviously his bread and butter is fastball up at the top of the zone with the slider off of that, but having a little bit of a presence at the bottom of the zone, I think is an important thing with the fastball, but what was really good about yesterday, I thought coming off his last one too, where he was good was just the command and getting it to where he wanted to get it. And, you know, on sides of the plate and things like that. So uh, got, got his pitch count up over 70. Um, so he's in a good spot, but again, you know, with him, like I'm not even all that into his results of the thing. It's like his work has been so good the last three, four months, starting in the off season with his workouts, with his throwing progression. Um, and then he's carried that into spring and I've said it over and over and that's where I want his focus to lie. So it's not like you're married to one result on a given batter or a given day. Um, that's going to be noisy around Carlos just because of, you know, what he went through last year. Like if he's continuing to lock in on how he's worked and focusing on going to the post every fifth and sixth day, um, I think if we look up at the end and he's doing that, he'll be in a good spot. Uh, I saw the the cutter yesterday. I saw kind of, like, I guess, his or Matt Blake's or whoever's vision for it because or, originally I was like, that's the third pitch we're going to mix in? Like the, it's in between the fastball and the slider. So it's kind of similar to both, but up and in to righties off of uh, the uh, the fastball, it was kind. Of, he threw it three times yesterday, got good results on all three. So I was like, all right. yeah, and he got a good the the he struck out a lefty on one that was really really good, like down so that was down getting got him that to chase was down on it in a way. It's about ninety two, kind of down the way, just really good profiled cutter, and but yeah, it's something too that will help him with some righties too, just kind of get off that heater just a little bit. Cause guys really sell out to it and hopefully it'll allow his slider to get some chases as well. We have uh, a couple topics here that I, you know, you get asked about a ton and will get asked about a ton as we go. So I'm going to just, I'm going to give you the three topics and you tell me if there, you got any news for us or which one, yeah. you know, we can actually chew on and, and which ones you got to be kind of, you know, still, yeah. Cover yourself. Judge, return, DJ, and what happens if DJ's on the uh, IL to start the season because there's a lot of moves there, uh -huh. or fifth starter? Which one could we yeah. have the best combo about right now? You you, you do you. Pick okay. it out. Let's go. All right. Well, I'll start with fifth starter because yeah. if you look at the schedule, you have to have – you can't go four-man to start because you're opening up in two domes. But you could do a bullpen day – that first game in Arizona and then keep the other four guys there. And last year you brought on um, the four, four man bench and less pitchers. So I'm wondering, is that a lean for you guys right now that there wouldn't be a fifth starter break in camp? You would get entered in come more the third time through. No. So we will have a fifth starter. Awesome. Now, if it comes from off roster, because you can, you can recall some or, bring somebody from off roster. Okay. You can't recall somebody from the roster for the first, whatever, 10 or 12, 15 days, whatever it is. So we could conceivably go in a nine pen situation. And then for that fifth spot, recall somebody, but, but we haven't made that decision on who that starter is going to be yet. Um, I think you guys can all imagine who's still in competition for that. And, uh, you know, those will be the things we kind of decide here over the next week. So so you're saying that they might not be on the roster right away, but they will be in the rotation, like first time through, second time through, it'll be five guys, five guys. That's the plan, at least. Yes. How many guys are there left for that spot? Two, three? Um, I One? would say four, four or so. Okay. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think he gave him a little more meat to chew on than he thought. Um, okay, we're excited about that. Uh, is an attachment to that because he's probably one of those guys. I, I think Luke Weaver's been banged up. Is there has there been an update there? No, Luke's Luke's Luke had a neck that we pushed him a day. Um, he still has a neck. Yeah, literally. Uh, nice. <laughs> no, but he had a little. 
he had a little neck, so we we scratched him and pushed him pushed him a day just because we wanted to give it full recovery. So he threw his live. He's actually starting tomorrow night for us, and Clark's going live uh, earlier in the day. Okay. okay. So, so it's looking like one of the kids, Jim. So Weaver, Heel, Beater, Warren, Hampton, one of those? Uh, not Hampton right now, no. I will, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you already got sent down. Okay, so then there's the four. Yeah. Interesting. I like the way Heels looked. Is it because he's coming off injury, is that, would that hinder him, even if, you know, he looks great and stretched out, just wanting to ease in more to? Luis? Yeah. Yeah, well, the thing with Luis is, you know, the the one thing you're not going to probably get out of him is, you know, north of 100 innings or 150 innings. That's hard to envision coming off of that. So what's the best role for him? Uh, you know, you know, is it as a starter and, and get the best of him? Is it, you know, using him that Michael King kind of role? Um, but he is definitely – shoved his way into the conversation. He's been as dominant as anyone in spring training. I, I think not not only our camp, just anywhere. Like, it's been really impressive, and he has thrown himself right into the conversation with how he looks and how he's throwing the ball. It's been exciting. Yeah. Okay. You kind of – I agree with you, but you kind of pushed it down to three a little bit now in my head with uh, the whole 100 innings talk. But I won't pry anymore on that. We'll move and, over – Look, like we're we're also not married to that, you know, like I think you're able to really get a really good snapshot of of guys and where they're at um, just by things you're able to measure throughout the year. So to determining if a guy's in a healthy position moving forward. So, you know, that like even with Clark last year, we didn't set a hard innings cap on anything just because we're able to measure, you know, the kind of physical output he's doing in between starts like is it in line with where he's been all year so there's little things that you can do that are red flags or 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 green flags for that matter of of let's keep going we're in a good spot so we're able to measure that stuff a little bit better so it's not a you know these things aren't aren't hard caps like maybe they have been in the past yeah i gotta imagine roster construction or roster options and stuff goes in as well like weaver has to be on the tr he, he can't be starting the minor so if he's starting then you're gonna want maybe heel in the bullpen because he also has already pitched uh or if it's neither of them what then if it's beater or warren then you have weaver in the bullpen so there's a lot of like yeah, moving it, parts it gets a little bit tricky early too because um you know with the rules you can't recall guys on the roster that have started until a certain date. Yeah. You have certain guys that are off roster that don't have options that do have options. Uh, you're going to have Tommy, Tommy Canley back real, probably real early in the season. So that, you know, you're going to have to option somebody for, so all those kind of things factor into how you construct the uh, original roster. Yeah. So that makes sense. Is that mostly on you calculating all that? Or who's like your guy for roster crunching, helping math of that sort? Um, I mean, a little bit of everyone, uh, you know, front office obviously has the, you know, and we'll, we'll have, we're going to have a big roster meeting this week where we'll get all the coaches front office, some particular scouts, you know, uh, and we'll, we'll kind of, it's a big, big meeting and we'll, kind of take in everyone's input, what they're seeing and, and try and make the best decision. Tell, tell, Ultimately it'll come down to the end of, you know, me and cash kind of ha having hearing everyone's voice and weighing in. And then we kind of make the decision and, and knowing that, especially in the first couple of weeks, it'll be a little bit fluid. Tell, tell Cashman that you loved his episode of talking Yanks. He hopped on this off season. That's, uh, I, I know that he, yeah, he was, he was, uh, I think he, I think he enjoyed getting on with you guys. Okay, that's good news. Good to hear. You want to go DJ, yep. Jim? Yeah, there's some with DJ. I know he's banged up, and if he is going mm -hmm. to the aisle to start the season because bone bruises can take a little bit and no need to rush at the start of the season in cold weather with a bruise. But with Peraza also down, that just in our heads, like there's no easy next couple steps or for fans obvious because that means I would guess – uh, Oswaldo probably gets some run starting at 
third in his replacement. And then I don't know who's the bench spot because it's someone Correct. that's not, it could be Vivas or, or someone else. Like, so is there any, any leans or any movement there that you guys already discussed? Uh, loose discussions. Again, that'll be those things we talk about here this week as we have those roster meetings. Um, you never know if something comes from outside the organization. Um, but these will be all things that are, that are still very much in play and up in the air here the final week. Um, and I wouldn't say I wouldn't, I mean, that's the assumption that DJ's on the IL, which I would, I wouldn't say is, um, I'm just kind of noncommittal on it. And I yeah. want to make sure he's good to go when we start. And the news we've gotten on him is good. Um, and you know, he's even in here today on the off day, um, and, and looks even better today. So, you know, he's, I feel like we, we got a little fortunate because I think we're a little, little concerned there with, um, and, and then having the x-rays and the CT scans and Dr. Mates, the foot specialist here to have a in-person evaluation with them. I uh, feel like we got pretty good news. It's just a matter of now what's the timeline. Is it, is it a couple of days? Is it a week? Uh, we'll see. Speaking of good news, uh, we've, well, you know, it's a funny 24 hours for Yankee fans and probably yourself, too. We we get the first judge injury update, and everyone's like, oh, damn, the big fella. And then we got the cold news, and everyone was like, oh, like we'll circle back on the big guy, uh, actually. Uh, and then the cold news has played out, knock on wood, pretty well, and we'll see what goes on the rest of the way there. But Judgy and Boone, I know you've had to laugh at yourself a couple times because, you know, we've gotten a few <laughs> judges going to be in the lineup, Judge is going to be out there the next day, and I think we, we heard Judge is going to be in the lineup tomorrow, Wednesday, so... I don't know, man. I like, are you, yeah. are you in the same seat as us at this point? Uh, no, because I, I think tracing it back to, it, it started with the day he played where he came out. And I think people thought he came out because of the injury. And, and that was the day where he was like, eh, I'm not feeling great, but it, but that day was lined up with Grisham to split center field. So that was just, that was actually a coincidence. And then the next day, I was on the road in Clearwater on a split squad and um, and then as they went and did the the they got the images because it was the same day they were they were doing cold just to be safe. We got good news on that. It was negative. And I think. And understandably so and rightfully so, like we've just been extremely cautious with this and don't want it to turn into something. And I do feel like. Uh, he is playing tomorrow. That's <laughs> that's my plan. I've sent out the lineup with him in it. So if 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 it adjusts, it'll just be well. I I botched it again, but I don't think that's gonna it, well, again. I'm not. It's not something I'm overly concerned with. Um, it's it's I think as as simple as us being really cautious with the big guy and making sure this doesn't turn into something. Is it an abdominal strain? Is there a diagnosis? It's like it's no. not even that. No, he was just, you know, really just experienced some so, some soreness kind of in that core area. Um, but that's why I think they were also super cautious with going and making sure they got some images of it. It didn't show anything. So um, we've just been treating it and making sure like he's ramped up and good to go and feel like he's he is uh, coming off of yesterday. He'll have an off day today with the full off day and then uh, plan on plan on hopefully having them in there tomorrow with, with a couple of ABs. Would like that. Yeah. He's like important. That. He's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How have, yeah you, he is. how have you enjoyed watching Soto up close? It's been special, special. Um, he's, uh, he's, he's been a lot of fun to watch. Um, he's really works hard. You know, our, we, we got to know him a little bit this winter, just organizationally and with our strength and conditioning. And they were like, man, he's, they were able to go visit him and see his routine and see his off season preparation, which I think they were really impressed with. And he's carried that into spring training here. He's fit in really well in the room. Um, and, and he can really hit and I'm really excited to see him go do his thing. He's actually the last few days, hasn't hasn't hit the ball much but and i'm like perfect timing just go through a little <laughs> bit of this and then uh but he's uh 
no doubt going to do some special things in the Bronx for us this year. That's, uh, you know, funny you say that. It's it's good to hear. I mean, baseball people are baseball people. I I know we were we were laughing the year Higgy Higgy led the spring training in homers, and we were kind of like, yeah. hey, Higster, you know, bottle that up a little bit, you know. I know, and then Higgy went like two months without hitting his first home run, and then he still I I think he still ended up with like ten that year. Higgy Higgy's Higgy's got a lot of pop, but that spring he was killing everybody and uh yeah so uh i'm excited i'm excited about one though obviously like i I know all yankee uh fandom is can i uh this is and again we're you know year seven eight of talking yanks at this point and we we dig through probably too much but this is kind of the point of spring training where we start hearing some whispers of that reliever that's going to make the team and has kind of been one of the stories at camp. I know, you know, you're obviously not going to announce that unless you want to, but, you know, we, we've seen Birdie, who's a guy with MLB experience that's hitting 100 out there. Um, you know, there, there's the Cody's have been floating around, uh, you know, Clayton Andrews. I, I guess, you know, it seems like one of these guys is, is going to make the roster crunch. I, yeah, good chance of that. You know, I would... You know, Dennis Santana, De Los Santos, both guys we like a lot as well that I think are really going to help us. Um, obviously, Ian Hamilton, you know, had a really great season for us last year. Where he's at right now and how he looks, um, I feel like buckle up for him too. Okay. He's he's uh, he's going to be a big big piece down there. So I'm excited about what's going to emerge. And, and there's even some guys that haven't pitched for us yet um, that, that could emerge, you know, at some point, even early in the year. So, um, feel like we got a lot of talent from, from an arm standpoint. And with Canely coming back, that is very interesting. Cause then you got to choose wisely who you put on the roster, knowing that you're going to have to right. uh, take them off when Canely comes and. Yeah. And, and Tommy should be ready fairly early in the season. So, um, he threw live he, yeah, day before yesterday and was was really good. So he'll have a couple more of those, and then we'll want him to pitch in some games, you know. And so, yeah, it, it, that'll be – that'll factor in a little bit to how we go, especially at the start. Will Rortvet be a uh, similar situation to Florio last year? Might be a very targeted or a question or very direct, but you know, you put Florio on the opening day last year and then made had to make the move. Uh, and Rortvet's in a similar boat with no options, but I, yeah. you don't want to lose him. I know, so yeah, you keep I mean, him around. Uh, there's some similarities there, I guess, but it's also a little bit apples and oranges there. Like, Flo was actually just made the most sense there roster wise too. So um, with where we were at that, you know, moment in time, um, we'll see with Ben. Ben's looked really, really good this year. I mean, obviously he continues to catch really well, but I've been pleased with his at bats too. He's really, um, you know, swung the bat well, but, but is putting together some quality at bats, competitive at bats really from the start. Um, So yeah, there'll be some tough decisions. All right. Uh, we're going to be in town this weekend, Thursday, uh, Friday, we'll be at the stadium Saturday. Is there any one player or I mean, employee that you want us to kind of spy on tail, like anyone up to anything fishy? Um, yeah. Check in with me when you guys, you guys get here Friday, Thursday, Thursday, but I don't know if we're going to the stadium Thursday. Yeah, we could. Okay. So. So you'll be here Friday, Saturday. All right. And then yeah. we leave for Mexico. Those of us going to Mexico, we leave after the game Saturday. Is that going to be the full squad going no. like the starters or no? No. Uh, we got a handful of guys. Uh, Trevino, Stanton, Verdugo, Soto are going. Victor Gonzalez, Jonathan Luizaga. DJ was initially going. I probably won't bring him now. And then the rest of the guys are staying back. Is that their call or your call for some of those guys? Obviously, Victor Gonzalez is going to want to go play. He's from Mexico. Yeah, a little bit of both. You know, at the start of spring, I start. I kind of, I wanted to 
kind of present it to guys to see who who was really interested in going and and then depending on how all that played out I, I would either have to say all right you are going you are going but it kind of worked out that you know there were a handful of guys that were like yeah I definitely want to go and there were some guys that ah, I'd probably rather stay back so it's kind of it's kind of worked itself out pretty easily the, the biggest challenge has been like um putting the pitching together like you know we're not bringing a lot of big leaguers um to mexico so it's like putting the pitching together making sure we have enough coverage there and then also uh where we're going to fill in from a backup standpoint and the other uh you know starting positions around our main guys all right i have a question that was uh i don't know if you got asked this but i'm curious how it happened why did rizzo make the road trip down to Fort Myers. Road warrior. Riz has been a road warrior this week. I know. No, he's, he's, he's the only veteran with road at bats, but it's it's Detroit, it's Philly yeah, yeah. or Toronto, but then well, he, Fort Myers. Yeah, so I worked out something with him. So he went down there because that was a four out of five for him. So kind of building him. He's he's um and then with the off day it's closer to home for him. So I, I let, if he came to Fort Myers and I let him go home uh, for the off day. So I knew there had to be something because it was weird. That's managing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Oh, Mike's going in and out. I have some spring training trivia for you. A better trivia next week. It's going to be opening day trivia next week. This week. He's got next week's trivia prepared. I I had someone make it. Oh, wow. Okay. This is this one. We're just, where I just, I'm just curious to see what, you know, and don't know about your own squad in spring training. Um, okay. we, we care about stat wise. If I, uh, asked you which Yankee has the most at bats in spring this so far. Don't look. Hey, it feels like, that? feels very much like you're looking. <laughs> I'm not, I'm looking at the roster. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Me I too. Am. Um, most eight, uh, Volpe. Yes. Yes. Volpe. Okay. How about walks? Oh. Walks. Because, like, I know stats you probably don't really care about, but there's a guy that's got um, the most walks. It's a standout walker. Oof. Rizzo? He's in second with seven. Grisham's got ten. Ooh. Grish. He might, yeah. he might lead the Grapefruit League. Leading the Grapefruit League in walks. He might. He might. He's uh, very patient there. Okay, what about the most innings pitched? Ooh. Um. Okay, what about most innings pitched by a potential fifth starter? Because that's what I'm judging uh, your guys' decision off of. Most innings pitched. Um, I will go with Beater. Well, Beater's the most of a potential fifth starter. Rodon's got got the most right now because he just oh, started. Okay. But yeah, Beater, 13 innings, four starts, or two starts, two uh, appearances. Yeah. So, okay. so I'm putting a lot of stock into that. <laughs> okay. Dennis Santana, the most of, rel- of a reliever, though. So there, And you said his name first, so everyone's got him on the roster now. <laughs> <laughs> and we're prying and we're uh, prying. Hey, no, that's kind of, uh, right. again, we'll, we'll be 2020 down. 24 journalism. I love it. <laughs> we'll be down there. And again, we're morale guys. So, you know, if they want to work, bring Joe's is coming too. So if they want to see us take BP, so they feel better or something like that, we're flexible. You let us know, skip. We're flexible. Maybe we'll throw you, get you some BP on the half field. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. That's that, that's a confidence booster for me. That sounds good for us. That's like the celebrity softball game when the outfield's a home run. Get some w- wiffle ball material out there and let you rip. All right. I like that. Need it. Uh, when you asked Stroman about opening day, was he like, nah, I want to do the Bronx? Because I don't blame him at all. He's no, a home opener, um, right? He was. So, you know, obviously when we knew Garrett wasn't going to be there for opening day, um, my initial feeling was I wanted to keep Stro on his schedule and where he was lining up. And one of the reasons we put him in the three slot was for opening day in the Bronx. Like I wanted that to be him. Um, so my natural 
thought was I was going to go with Nestor um, just because he was in a spot where he could, we could be the most flexible with his schedule. And um, so I, but I did bring Stro in just to, you know, out of respect and saying, Hey, my preference is to keep you on online, especially with the home opener in the Bronx. Um, but, you know, I want to be deferential to you. And he was unbelievable. He's sitting right in that chair. He was just like, whatever you guys want, I'm, I'm ready for anything you, you guys decide. And he goes, and he goes, if you change your week, change your mind next week, I'm good. I'm good with that too. Like I, I, I do not care. I'm just ready to roll. And he's in, he's in a good place. I actually, the reason I pushed back our, our time slot today was we just finished up with his, he had a live BP today. So, um, so he, he just finished up 78 pitches out there. He's really sharp, but now Stroh's been awesome. And he was just like, whatever you guys need, I'm ready to roll. Love to hear it. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. We'll check in with you when we're uh, down there and then hop on next week to talk, uh, some final decisions, I guess. Awesome. Awesome. Look forward to seeing you guys. Cool. Safe travels. All right. All right. Thanks. Booney. Booney. And that was babbling with Boone in English. Yes. A fun combo, Jake. Uh, I don't even know. I, where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? He gave us so many little nuggets that I can chew on. He, he corrected some wrong thoughts I had, yeah. which now are, are nice. He avoided a certain area that was... Uh, I didn't pry on it because it felt like, eh, the third base, if DJ is hurt. Right. He That was the first time he, he kind of said off roster, which makes sense because they don't have a lot of infield depth. And, like, as Waldo would be the starting third baseman, then the who gets called up to the bench. And that was the time where he was like, it could be someone off roster. So I still think they're hunting for that guy. Yeah, I would tell people to go to DraftKings, make sure that's on their roster, because uh, March Mania is here. I, I, could, I could see Boone's inner sports guy hoping that there was going to be a little, little March hoops action in the convo. We're about the ball. But if you're about that ball... Uh, five bucks can turn into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code YANKS. New customers can bet five bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at the DraftKings Sportsbook with code YANKS. The crown is yours. Uh, yeah, the third base one, uh, as well as the only thing that currently really makes any sense. Um, and yeah, as, as we've kind of been daydreaming, we we don't know who or what. You know, there's still that free agent, uh, you know, Donnie Barrels hive that's out there for Donovan Solano. Or, you know, we've been kind of looking around the league and there's always one or two guys that, uh, you know, don't don't end up making the roster that could be the uh, the versatile or play a little third base or any infield. I was a little bummed out about J.D. Davis, but... Um, you know, he wanted playing time in Oakland. He said that when he took his contract, which, again, the, that was kind of the good news from the convo. Like, Booney, Booney gave a pretty straight up, like, DJ's foot news isn't bad. Like we, I don't, But I think it's also he might miss time, but not a lot of time. Right. Um, which, again, going back to J.D. Davis, that he's looking for year-long playing time. He got that in Oakland. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what's on the, the scrap heap uh, in the coming days, kind of rude to say that. Um, but you know, Mike Talkman was a uh, end of spring training ad back in the day. Uh, who are some of the other guys? I mean, Jose Trevino. They got at the very Jose end Trevino. of camp. Yeah, Talkman. Uh, there was another the year. Jay before. Bruce was close to the end. I think Neil Walker halfway through camp. Handsome. Yeah. So yeah, I there there isn't a clear path, uh, and I think they're definitely keeping that window open. Um, interested to see the next updates on DJ. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I I thought the, the fifth starter convo was kind of the, the honey hole. Yeah. So they're not gonna, they're going to use a starter that is going to, that will start and be in the rotation. Cause we looked, we looked at the math recently and I don't know if that came out yet cause it's a PPP. So that's kind of wrong now if it comes out later. Bummer. So... So they could still They could have spot started a guy or even piggybacked Weaver and Heel and then gone to a four man. Right. And he was and he said, No, we're not gonna do that. Whoever we call is gonna be in the rotation. 
the way he talked about heel made it seem like he's not there, but he's saying, but he's deserved it, but he's not because they don't want to, there's an innings limit. So just starting him right off the gate would like yeah. hinder that limit. Right. Um, that's the way I perceived what he Turning said. Turning from Tommy, John, I get it. Beater and Warren are in the mix and Weaver, but Weaver hasn't pitched in a little bit and wouldn't be like built up. Right. So the, after that combo, I, I lean Beater or Warren are going to get this gig. Yeah, beater has got the most innings. That's one of the clues. Warren was supposed to be the guy that's most ready. Uh, yeah, the Luke Weaver thing's really interesting. I, as Booney mentioned, he's I think he's pitching tomorrow, so I want to see how many bullets is that because, you know, is he even – is he built up for his, like, relief role? He should be, I guess, if th- if things go swimmingly tomorrow. Uh, but, yeah, and I, I think the other thing that I think he was alluding to was, like, Will Warren or Clay, let's say it's one of them, if it's Warren or Beater, they wouldn't have to be on the roster until their start. Yes. So you could have an extra bullpen guy up for four days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have someone you send down, you call them up. They probably would just keep that guy for three weeks, but they could even do more funny. Like, if they don't have a preference between Warren and Beater. Well, that's what I said. I followed up, said, but they're going to be in the rotation. He said, yes. So right. they're going to, according to him, because that's what I was saying, it's yeah. not just going to be one start, then back. They're going to make the next time through, too. And he said, yes. Which would make sense. You'd like to think they have a preference between Warren and Beater, and you'd like to think, um, you know, if you're going to do that at this point in the season, give them three or four starts, because that starts. Uh, because that could, I don't know, their value could fly up. Like, it's, a, it's my joke about the prospect rankings list every year. Like, the, the year Randy Rosarena wasn't a top 100 prospect, then he played in the postseason, and he was top five. <laughs> so if, if Will Warren comes up, he shows a nice four-pitch mix over four starts, that yeah. can change his Yankee outlook or his trade value outlook. And it was nice to hear him kind of honestly talk about the roster manipulation that has to happen or can happen at the beginning where – Tommy Canley's on the IL right now when he's healthy. And that's nice to hear that he's going to come back sooner than I was anticipating. They have to they have to take someone off the the roster. Right. Because is he 60-day? No. So, Canley, no. no. I don't think but so. Yeah, I think he's 60 just day, literally. He literally like the 26 out. man? Yeah. 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 Like, so that sends somebody down. Somebody down, yeah. If DJ's... Out to start, it sounds like he'd be a quick IL. But he'd sometimes they bring up a guy that they would lose, DFA. like comfortable DFAing, because then he's not going to get picked up in waivers. So I think that that means a Dennis Santana type or a reliever type is going to break the opening to roster, knowing, hey, let's get something out of him while we can. When Canley comes back, we'll, this might be the we'll, guy. we'll DFA him, hopefully – no one's got room for him there. And that's where, you know, I've obviously been driving the birdie bus. Um, but, yeah, that's I, I would look for some like a Santana or a De Los Santos probably breaks camp with the team. And then, you know, when, when Canely's ready, which, you know, could be five days in, ten days in, that's probably your DFA guy instead of someone they maybe truly believe in more when there's more of a bullpen opportunity open. Um, well, if he starts on the 10-day IEL, or is it 15 for pitchers? It'll be whatever that minimum is. Right. But, um, which would be funny. Can't be the Korea game for every team. That's just got to be those teams. But I don't know. Um, so, yeah, that, that was good little insight. And like that he gave a Canely update. It's one of those things you hear pitcher injury in spring training, and you're kind of like, okay, yeah. <laughs> see you when I see you. Yeah, so... I'm thinking Weaver's going to be in the bullpen unless he's on like a like an IL needs more starts. You know, if he if It'll if he feels turn. unbuilt up and unready, he can accept like a almost like a rehab, stay in Tampa and pitch in games. They've done that before. If Weaver tomorrow doesn't throw a ton, and then they have more options. Otherwise, it seems like Weaver's going to be in the pen. Heel's going to start at AAA and. Beater or Warren are, are going to be the fifth, but everything, anything can change, and I can be wrong interpreting. But that's kind of where it seemed like they're kind of leaning. Things are a little fluid. I think what Luis Heel has working against him too is he only has one option year left. Yeah, so they'll probably they'll probably wait. They like Heel, um, but if you burn that to start the season, it's over. Where you know if he goes and lights up AAA for a little bit, and you know there's other 
other pitchers that are performing. Uh, gives them a little more flexibility, but I don't know. I, I think they, they know they're going to push the Luis heel button at some point this year. And, God, he's he's looked good. He has. He's really fun to watch pitch. And update, um, Trent Grisham does have the most does have the most walks. Where do the Tigers play spring training? They're also grapefruit, so he's tied with Zach McKinstry. God. Big two. Yeah. It's always those two. That was fun to be chatting again. I enjoyed that. We're back, people. We're close. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If it's your first time tuning in, you can subscribe mm. to the channel. That helps us out a whole bunch. And uh, tune in next time because we're going to be doing it again. Big G. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees.